My dear brother and good morning, welcome to today's devotional. We're going to be going to the first book of the Bible, the book of Genesis, written by Moses. And this book is part of what we call the Pentateuch, or the Humash in Hebrew, and will be the first five books of the Bible, which are also known as the books of the law or the Torah, as the Jews call it. In chapter 4 of this beautiful book, as of verse 3, we read the following. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering, but he did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was very angry and his countenance fell. It is curious to see that when a person is not doing right, the first thing that happens is that they change their face. And that's exactly what happened to Cain. He didn't, could not stand that the offering of his brother Abel was accepted, was uh, recognized by the Lord, and his offering was rejected. Is it true that God has favored to some he loves and others he hates? Absolutely not. What happens is that Cain knew perfectly well how he had to approach God at that moment in time. Both him and his brother had received the same teaching on, from the part of the, his parents, and they knew that what God demanded at that time, it was not offering of things of the earth, of products of the earth, but products of animals. Cain was not an atheist. Cain, what happened is that he wanted to approach God in his own way. He did not reject God. What he did not agree was the way in which God had established that a man had to approach him. His parents knew other systems, and his parents had intimate and direct fellowship with God. But when they were expelled from the Garden of Eden, everything changed. And as of that time, when they were ex expelled from the Garden of Eden because they rebelled and disobeyed the Word of God, the way a relationship from men to God changed radically. Now it was through sacrifice of animals, of bloodshed, so that they will remember that as sinners, they had to come a time when they had to carry out a sacrifice, a perfect sacrifice that our Lord Jesus Christ did, shedding his own blood for the sinners, and that way to cancel the debt, the terrible debt that man had with the Creator, with the Lord. Cain knew that perfectly well, but he disobeys. He is the rebellious believer, the rebellious that does not want to do things according to the will of God, but according to his own criteria. How many believers ha are today, inclusive some that serve the Lord as pastors, teachers, etc., who want to live a Christianity their own way? As they said, the rules themselves and not subject themselves to anything or anyone. Cain is a person that did not accept the plan of God, the way that God had changed, had revealed so that from there on to get closer to him. And also he did not like the fact that his brother did things well. That is called jealousy and envy. He did not do things well and he disliked that his brother did it well. As the popular saying goes, they don't eat or they don't let anyone eat. They don't go in or let anyone go in. That spirit of Cain, that independent spirit, that spirit of not wanting to give an account to anyone, to not being subjected to anyone, to believing that they're always the others that are doing things wrong, but we always justify everything that we do. That spirit is latent and alive and is still moving among us. We have to banish that and uproot that completely from our lives because rebellion, disobedience, arrogance, that is what Cain had, was not pleasing the Lord. He knew perfectly well that they were not products of the land what God demanded. Surely he brought a great offering, but not according to the design of God. Are we going doing things according to the will of God? or according to our own will. Because I see believers, and I know many of them, 
who believe in the Lord logically, they want to serve the Lord according to what they think, but they are not doing it according to the Bible. They are doing it according to what they believe that they're pleasing and serving the Lord. And what starts bad always ends up bad or worse. Isn't it better to seek God in prayer, to read His Word, ask for advice, as the Bible says, that in the multitude of advice wisdom is, and to learn to wait on God and not to organize ourselves, our lives, but let our God, our shepherd, the one who organizes and opens and closes the doors and tells us the time and place in which we have to honor them. Thanks to the Lord, we already have all the word of God in our hands. Thank the Lord. Everything that the Lord wanted us to know, we already have it in our hands in the Bible, in our own language, so that no one has to invent anything, so that no one has to say, well, I'm going to pray and I'm going to see what the Spirit says. But to let the Word of God instruct you, speak to you, how do we do things to please God? How are we going to be, uh, steps are going to be taken to get prepared? so that in the future, not distantly, that we can serve the Lord and we can serve effectively in His kingdom and His work. That spirit of independence, that spirit of wanting to do things harshly without consulting with anyone, simply sometimes informing, believing that that way we look good, but simply to justify us in our hasty steps and out of order, it does not please God. Cain was rejected by the Lord, and do you know what he did? We all know that. Instead of repenting, instead of asking for forgiveness, instead of doing things right, what he does is he rises up against his brother and he kills him. The first murderer of history, killing nothing more, nothing less than his own flesh and blood. It is easier, according to Cain's criteria, to put an end to him than to please God. But if you read the Bible carefully, the, the, the story of these two brothers, the Lord is speaking to Abel and he tells him what he has to do. How terrible it is when he got, God speaks and he doesn't want to listen to God's voice. How terrible it is when the Lord speaks and we don't want to obey what he tells us. That's why the word of God says, and I remind you this text, if you will listen your voice, his voice today, do not harden your hearts. How many hardened hearts are today that believing themselves that they are doing the will of God what they're doing is fulfilling their personal goals they have their own agenda and they want to put God in, in their plans but they don't want to get into the plans that God has for them because they're rebellious disobedience that people that do not want to do what God wants but whatever they want to and when you encourage them and you tell them you have to prepare, you have to wait, you don't do things that way, well, they leave the church and they go to an other places or to nowhere because today it also has become fashionable just to go alone, not to want to congregate or wanting to be under anyone's covering to proclamate pastor, apostle, evangelist, etc. And that is the way things are, that it is sad to see in many ways. That is how entire families are who believe in that they are pleasing God, they criticize their local church, they criticize the servants of God, they speak ill of the whole world, but they always are right. They are the ones who always are in possession of the truth, and they don't recognize that they, have, they could have been wrong and that they have rushed. But it is very difficult to ask forgiveness and recognize that we have been wrong. But that is the right path. That is the, the person that God blesses, lifts up, and restores. The one who separates and stops and meditates that he has a rush, that you don't do things that way. But that work, obviously, can be only done by God. There is not a worse a deaf that doesn't want to hear and a blind that doesn't want to see. I hope that this morning with this passage of two brothers, it's not an unbeliever and a, and a pagan and, and a believer who lo, wor, loves and worships the Lord. They're two brothers, sons of the same parents.
but one chooses the path of obedience, of submission to the plan of God, and another one chooses the path of rebellion. In certain way, the attitude of Cain is what makes a religious to approach God his own way, to serve the Lord his own way, to get angry with other people, because it is incredible to see how there are people who like it that others are being blessed, used, and prospered by the Lord. That is something incredible, but it's very real. People who know the blessing that God is giving, they observe because they're not blind, everything that the Lord is doing, but they're not happy, they're not rejoicing, but rather they continue forward with their earmuffs, trying to do only and exclusively what they themselves want to do that God has placed in their hearts. May the Lord help us to have the spirit of evil. Maybe we don't understand everything, but if God says animals, we will take animals. If God has sent something else, then we'll do what God has ordered. Because in the end, our goal in life is not to fulfill our dreams and ambitions with our own personal agenda, but our goal in life is to do and fulfill only and exclusively with the will of God. But by the way, it's holy, please, pleasing, and, and perfect. But in order to know the perfect will of God, not yours, but the perfect will of God, you must be transformed through the renewal of our understanding. Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. There are people who do not want to be renewed. There are people who are with the structures of 10, 15, 20 years ago, and they believe that under those and all the structures, they can continue moving forward in the kingdom of God, and they get confused and they're wrong. Because God has brought a renewal, or spiritual renewal, because God has been using means, new means that he has placed in at our reach so that we can reach thousands and thousands of people all over the earth. And while some are still with a, uh, with a uh, shovel trying to demolish a mountain, the Lord is giving us dynamite so we can more quickly carry out the Great Commission, which is what basically should concern each and every one of us. My dear brethren, may the Lord bless you to put in the, his word in practice, to realize that things have to be done decently and in order, and that order and that decency has been clearly stated by his word in, by the Lord. If you want to serve the Lord, glory to God, but do not rush. Prepare yourself well. Ask for advice because You want to put yourself in the front line, and in the front line, if you want to serve the Lord, is where you get attacked, and, and you have to be supported and backed up. Because if you're not by the Lord, then you can be burned out, and you can end up badly what could have been a tremendous blessing for you and for other people. May the Lord help you to put into practice the advice that the Lord gives us through His blessed word. Let's pray and every day putting this day in prayer, presenting him, asking him for wisdom and submission to his holy and beautiful word. Let's pray. Blessed Heavenly Father, thank you one more day for this privilege that you give us to start with you and all together this early time of the morning, listening to your advices, your word, your instructions. Everything that you give us through your word is useful. It's necessary that we hear it. Help us, Lord, to put in practice the Word of God, and not only to hear it, but put it into practice, because it is the only way that our life will be a useful and, and good life for your kingdom. Do not allow us to make decisions in, on the flesh without consulting God, without having support from your side. Lord, we put our lives in your hands, and we ask you that you will keep our lives that you will protect your beloved church, and that in the name of Jesus, we can have a day full of learning, of spiritual growth, so that each day we're closer to your heart, and we do things decently and in order. We ask all these things with thanksgiving in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Well, my dear brethren, let's reflect today on the story of Cain and Abel. It's found in the book of Genesis, chapter 4. 
those who have the daily devotional at hand, they know that there are a series of questions that now we have to answer. And we're going to be reflecting and meditating throughout this day regarding this very interesting story of two brothers who unfortunately one ends up killing the other for not wanting to abide the will of God in his life. My dear brethren, I wish you have a blessed weekend. We will do everything possible to be live on the pastor online at 6 o'clock Canary Island time answering your questions. And my dear brethren, let's continue praying one for another. That is the most important thing that we can do. May the Lord bless you. Let's move forward, clinging to the Lord and scrutinizing His holy word to do things decently and with order. Blessings, my dear brethren.